ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the first installment of the Trivia Trials Intergalactic League. I am your humble host, Michael Canterbury. Joined with me here is the lovely Holly. Holly, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing great. How are you doing? I'm, I'm excited. The, the Trivia Trials have been away for a while. They're back now, and we have a whole new league of, of folks far, far away. Across the galaxy? Across the galaxy, mm -hmm. across the country, um, or just in our backyard. I'm really not sure where these guys are right now. They may be in the house. That would be awesome. Maybe in the Welcome studio. Home. Holly, how do you feel about being at the studio for the, you know, or I guess at the table here on the trials for the first time? Are, are you ready? I'm feeling excited, Michael. I haven't gotten to practice being a host for one of these yet, but. That's, hey, the practice makes perfect, and that's where I'm at right now, Holly. Been doing it a long mm -hmm. time, not bragging mm -hmm. anything. But this mm -hmm. is, folks, you know, uh, uh, Flying Casuals uh, Trivia Trials, our formal occasion. Holly, so formal uh, in this isolation that I actually showered and yes. put on pants today. It was truly a miracle. Truly a miracle. I'm not sure you're actually wearing pants right now. I am not. Tempting. Okay, wow. It's fine. That is fine. Holly, we have a, a couple of heavyweights with us in this first, you know, episode round a, a competition of, of trivia trials. A couple of heavyweights here. We've got Jory, been, you know, been with Flying Casual since the beginning, you know, was a listener back in the Rebel Watch days. First trivia trials mm -hmm. for that young man uh, and then we also have brent coming over with his first trivia trials also another longtime listener of flying casual and also back in the rebel watch days they are familiar with the trials but they have not yet been tested so we're here to test them we are here to test them and i was you know lucky enough to talk to these guys a little earlier today just wanted to get an idea where their heads are at and so uh, we'll go ahead and cut to that and and see what they had to say Brent, it's it's these are your first trials, um, and I gotta ask, do you, do you have any idea what to expect? Have you watched previous trials? I've uh, I've, uh, I've been around for all the previous trials, or at least uh, you know I've seen what goes down. You know I can go I can get a little sweaty, so hopefully I can live up to expectations. We'll see what happens. Are there any tactics you use? I mean, did you watch it once and you just trust in the force? I mean, were you did you have that thing on repeat this week? I I was hoping more view but i got to watch once um i don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the hollow vids but apparently the resistance they found uh, exegol so i've uh, <laughs> been in the process of trying to relocate the sith home world um so we're going to try out some other places or whatever so i've been packing up and uh, getting uh, getting ready to do some moving here uh, we we're planning on doing it this summer but something popped up so we were able to bounce on it a little bit earlier yeah, now i gotta ask then you know You've teased us a little bit, you know, that you, you tend to lean to the dark side. Is that something that we can expect to see in the trials? Is that going to play into your strategy at all? Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I've just always been a fan of the, the Sith and the dark side and just, you know, that, that whole group you know, not afraid to really delve into those powers that everyone else has to stay away from. So, Brent, any, you know, any words you have uh, for for Jory, um, you know, trash talking in the group has been kept to a minimum, but I'm not sure once the trial begins where we're going to go. I don't know. It's still early. I've only recently cracked into my beer, so I'll just say may the force be with him. Okay, Jory. So, you know, I had a, talk, a chance to talk to Brent, um, and, and now I'm, I'm chatting with you. You know, this is this isn't your first, you know, time with the trials. Now you haven't competed, but you know what to expect. You know, so so what kind of strategy did you use going into studying for this thing? Did you study at all? Um, you know, did, what's the strategy here coming from you? Um, the strategy was basically, I kind of knew I had this in the bag. Let's go. Coming into Let's it. Go. So, Let's go. So um, I didn't really have to study that much. Come on. Uh, you Come know, on. I, I, I did a little bit of a rewatch. Um, didn't even finish the whole movie just because I knew Let's this go. Is, it's, it's going. It, it's done. It's a done deal. Yeah. The light side works with me and mm. uh, it will prevail. And uh, Master Brent is, is is he's going down. Joy, any any final any final predictions, any final thoughts from you? you know, before the match tonight? Um, you know, I, I think we should, uh, we should work on a handicap, you know, okay. we should spot him a few, few points, okay. um, you know, just, just to make it fair. 
Holly, those were, you know, some strong words, you know, from, from Jory. I can't tell if he's, you know, embraced the dark side. We're seeing a hero right now of Jory, and I'm not really used to it. I don't know whether to believe it. A sense of the darkness from Brent, but not so much trash talking from Brent. He seems confident. Um, both individuals may not have prepared like they wanted to. Um, we're going to find out here in a little bit, but yeah. I can only imagine that it's probably difficult training for something like this when you got a bunch of youngsters in the house with you. I mean, there's something to be said for multitasking, but... Drinking and studying and, and rearing children? That's a lot to juggle. That's a lot to juggle. Maybe they were juggling while studying. I'm not sure. That could have been a distraction, though. But, you know, they might not want to show all their cards yes. at one time. And if one starts juggling, I will say it, we may go outside of the rules of the trivia trials and award them bonus points because that's impressive. I mean, we would have to. We would have to. Um, I'll let you be the judge of that, depending on the juggle you know, technique, um, since you, I think mm -hmm. you are the juggling master yes. here in-house. Yes, and now I am the juggling judge. Yes, so we've got a couple you know, of things going on here, but uh, hopefully some, some correct answers yes. you know, are being answered. So um, we're going to see what these guys are made of, and if you're not familiar with tr the trivia trials, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners now aren't, we'll go ahead and break down the rules for you. So basic trivia going on here, folks. We've got three rounds. Rounds. Uh, the first round will consist of eight questions. Both of our competitors will be uh, answering those questions uh, via a whiteboard, a piece of paper, a rock, you know, if they've got to etch it out in 20 seconds, um, whatever they have to write their answers down just so they can be displayed to us clearly on their screens. Um, and that can be a little, you know, tricky with Skype. We're going to see how that goes. This is the first intergalactic match, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, but uh, so eight questions there. Contestants have around 20 seconds. You know, I'll let Holly determine if she wants to give them a little more time. Um, mm -hmm. 20 seconds to answer each question. And then we go to round two, Holly. And uh, we have 12 questions in round two. Each individual will be answering six questions. And the leader of the first round will actually pick six numbers, one through 12. Um, and those numbers that they select actually are associated with a question of those 12 and uh, the remaining questions will then go to their competitor and then finally in round three holly we have our competitors really picking their paths of destiny and this round really focuses on movie quotes there's going to be three questions for each each competitor and just like the prior round our leader is going to choose a destiny the path of their future, the light mm -hmm. side or the dark side. Um, and it's all going to be re uh, revolved around movie quotes. So don't forget that. So we're really going to see, you know, what path these competitors are going to take in the end. And, uh, you know, it really could, it could pay off and it could, it could bite them. Bite so them we may actually find out if Brent is on the dark side. Yeah, I have a feeling, you know, we are, it's going to be revealed here, here live. So folks, those are the rules. And let's, you know, let's see the minute of the hour we have with us, Jory and Brent. Fellas, are you ready for some trivia? Do it. Yes, sir. It sounds, Holly, like these fellas are ready to face their trials. So, gentlemen, I just have one thing to say to you now, and that is, well, two things. Have a <laughs> beverage ready, and may the force be with you. All right, gentlemen, this question is for you both in round one. So have your whiteboards, etch and sketch, and or rock ready. And you each have 20 seconds to answer this question. And I want to say each of you will be rewarded one repeat per question if you need the question repeated. So um, don't forget that you have that there. So your first question is this. Who's the first character to speak in Rogue One, a Star Wars story? Holly, could be a softball. I'm not really sure. The trivia trial writers are known to chuck some softballs every once in a while. That's true. But you really have to pay attention to the movie to know the answer to this question. That's very true. I mean, they at least would have to have seen it. I'm really hoping they watched Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and not Attack of the Clones. Well, I hope they picked the right movie. But let's find out. All right, gentlemen. Do we have answers from our competitors? Let's see them. All right, Holly, we have oh, Brent with Lyra and an 
a Krennic from Jory. Both are incorrect. Holly, Do you want to tell them? That's, a, that's two goose eggs there on the board. I'm, I'm really hoping these guys watched Rogue One. I'm pretty sure we sent the proper movie to them for the trials, but uh, maybe we sent them Attack of the Clones. I'm not sure. You may have jinxed it. So, Saw uh, Guerrera. The correct answer was Jen Erso. She calls out for her papa. Um, when Krennic is coming by. So, that, Holly, that's a tricky question. It is. You know, I watched the movie two and a half times today, and when Michael wrote this question, I said, are you sure? Yeah, I, 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 I changed my mind. I had a couple mm. other questions in there. Um, so, Holly, we're going to go now to question two. Well, Jin is transported to an Imperial labor camp on which planet? Holly, also, I mean, I will say uh, the, the name of the planet was uh, presented on the screen in this film. So maybe that helps mm -hmm. out our competitors a little bit. Maybe it doesn't. Right. I'm really just hoping none of them say Geonosis. They might say Geonosis. Okay. They might go with Alderaan. I don't know. Technically, Alderaan is still around, so that would be a viable answer. Well, Fellas, let's see. do we have answers on the boards? Those Whoa, are two correct answers, Holly. That. One point each. Wabani was the planet uh, where Jen was sent to do 20 years of labor. Mm -hmm. That's a long time to be on Wabani. You know, Michael, when I hear Wabani, I think wasabi, and I really wow. want sushi. I, I mean, that's an interesting fact. Uh, I don't think we can afford it right now during the recession, but uh, maybe when we're out of these hard times. Gentlemen, your third question is this. Who leads the rebel fleet in the attack on Scarif base? That is also a tough question. Yeah, Holly, there are a lot of Alliance commanders at this time. Uh, you know, it, I, 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 you know, it had Can you seen, repeat yeah, that question? Repeating the question, absolutely, absolutely. Your question is, who leads the rebel fleet in the attack on Scarif base? So we've already used one of our yeah. re- Asks. Yeah, Brent is not was a allowed. Question? Sorry, what was that? Is it one question per question or is it per round? Uh, per question. Yeah, you're good. You're Actually, good. You're good. The rules were stated. You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're good. Uh, yeah, a lot of different characters, Holly. There's so many to keep track of. Absolutely. Can we clarify? Do you mean the fleet or do you mean the actual attack? The rebel fleet. Now, Holly, I'm starting to question I, if I'm, they actually I'm watched the movie. I'm questioning, you know, if we see someone answer Darth Vader, I think we got a problem. I do too. Well, let's see what we have. Fellas, do you have answers ready? Wedge and chilies. <laughs> no, that's not what I wrote. We have one correct answer for Brent. And is that ah, Cassian Andor is incorrect? Cassian. So that it was it was uh, it was Admiral Raddus. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with you know uh, Admiral Akbar, he kind of looked like him, spoke like him a little. Holly um, uh, just had a British accent, I believe. Yeah, which he wasn't on the dark side. Not with the Empire. Raddus was not with the Empire, but had a British accent. He had a British. accent. Accent, if Could I recall. Could he have been a mole? Did I see the film? I, I don't, don't know. know. Uh, Holly, I think we're ready for question four. We got a close game so far. We do. We do. Um, well, before offering Jin a path to freedom, Rebel Command confronts Jin and lists the crimes of which she is accused. Name one of those crimes. Holly, there's a lot of crimes out there in the world. There really are. Uh, I, you know, I don't think she had any outstanding parking tickets. Not like me. But, uh, yeah. Can you repeat the question, please? Absolutely. Before offering Jin a path to freedom, Rebel Command confronts Jin and lists the crimes of which she is accused. Name one of those crimes. Do you think that no. she has like a starship and she opens the glove box of her starship and all of her parking tickets just fall out? Fall right out. Yeah, if we ever saw her flyer ship, that probably would have happened. I just want to know. I'm actually glad you you disclosed that we're not allowed to 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 go to the state of Florida since you have unpaid That's, parking tickets. I might have a warrant out for yes. my arrest. Yes. That all seems right. more like something that Han Solo would do. 
<laughs> very I think true. That's valid. Very true. But would be an incorrect answer, Holly. I will say that would be an incorrect answer. Uh, gentlemen, do you have a crime of which she committed? All right. Ugh. We have one correct answer. Forging documents from Brent and conspiracy conspiring against the Empire. Um, it was just a shot in the dark. <laughs> Uh, what's the, what's the, what's the other option there, Holly? I will read all the options. Cause I'm sure everyone wants to know. Absolutely. Possession of unsanctioned weapons. Yes. Forgery of Imperial documents. Mm -hmm. Aggravated assault. That's a common one that we uh -huh. hear here yeah. on earth. Especially in Florida. Mm -hmm. Escape from custody. Mm. Resisting arrest. So I, we will have to award Brent the point there. Jory, unfortunately, a close, a very good guess. I will say that, Holly. That, that was a guess for sure, but a close one. Unfortunately, the that. council has spoken, uh, and the council is Holly. It is I. And she has <laughs> said that that question will not be accepted. I will not accept it. In the it. trivia trials. All right, Toss folks. Toss it out. We're coming now with question five, and your question is, at what age does Cassian claim to have joined the fight? I think that's a softball question. Uh, you, you, you know, sometimes these writers do throw softball questions, and, and to some they may seem like softball questions. But this might not be? Folks in the comments right now probably, be, you know, throwing out some, some aggravation at this question, but, uh, you know, I don't control the writers, so... Oh, we just control the question. That's right. Fellas, do you have an answer to provide? Six years both? old. They're both on the board. Holly, another point. Brett, into, you know, uh, two points. Uh, Brent, I think, has four, correct? That is correct. All right. It's still a close game. It's anyone's ball game, Holly. We're still in the first round. We're still in the first and round. And these are still worth one point. Still worth one point. So you never know what's going to happen in the following rounds. Holly. Well, we do have three questions left in this round. We do. And I believe you have question six ready. I do. Before leaving for Jetta, Jin obtains a blaster. According to K2SO, what is the probability of Jin using the weapon against Cassian. Holly, K2, you know, as a technical droid, mm -hmm. he, he retains a lot of information. Was he doing a calculation here, or was he being, you know, sarcastic? I like a facetious droid, yes. but I think he was trying to do a calculation. I'll say he's one of my favorite. Mm, the best, maybe. The best, the best. Well. Gentlemen, do you have an answer for us? High, very high, Holly. I would have accepted high. Very high, you know, adding on there is perfect, and that's a point for both of our competitors. Uh, you know, some may be thinking in that moment, Holly, you know, thinking of 3PO mm -hmm. and, and his mm -hmm. calculations, and, you know, sometimes we get that from K2. Sometimes we just get a bunch of sarcasm. Yeah, I like the sarcasm, though, but... You know, I'm a sarcastic. I think that maybe I just feel a little yeah. bit of myself in K2. Yeah, I'll be phrasing. honest. It feels like I'm around. Wow, phrasing for wow. sure. It feels like I live with K2SO sometimes. There are worse droids or people to yes, live with. Yes, there are. Folks, we have a question seven coming now. Could be a droid. I guess I could go good or bad. <laughs> That's true. Well. That is very true. Yeah, great point. Question seven coming, and it is this. Which Rebellion Fleet Squadron leaders report in during the Battle of Scarif? Holly, a deep and sweaty question. We'll give our competitors a little bit of a hint that we are not looking for individual names. Yeah, I think that that's a good hint. We need all of the, uh, the squadron commanders and uh, I'll throw a little hint again and say they involve colors. That's a big hint. That's a big hint. Uh, you know, I think that's pretty generous of myself. We also gave them a little extra time to answer the question. Well, they <laughs> we're generous people, Holly. We if sure anything, are. go ahead and throw a like, you know, on the YouTube uh, for this video just for our, you know, generosity. generosity. Uh, gentlemen, do we have answers? 
it looks like we have red, blue, and gold. Correct answers from both competitors. Holly, they did in fact watch the film. I'm starting to feel like they did. I was I, worried there in the beginning. I was a little worried myself. I thought we were going to get... I was some, worried, too. <laughs> I thought we were going to get some references to other films or Clone Wars, and they just would have been correct. No, and Attack of the Clones, I think you said. Attack of the you Clones. You were really nervous I about that. I was nervous because I felt like I mistyped the email. Mm. Let's Holly, not give it too much Star Wars hate, my That's uh, never on this podcast. Holly, we are down to our last round that's one right. question and what is it? On what planet is Galen Urso's research facility located? Mm. Now, Michael, yeah. you have to know a lot about planets in the galaxy you to do. get this one right. You do, Holly, but I will say once again, I believe Star Wars was gracious enough to, to, to type mm -hmm. the name of the installation or the planet uh, on the screen for us, just in case we didn't yes. know where we were. I like to know where I'm going cinematically, so I appreciate Absolutely. that they do that. Yeah, it, I'll say it's a little dark. It's there's a lot of rain. It's hard to tell really where you are in that mm -hmm. scene. So that's that's totally fair. Well, let's see if they knew where we were. Let's see if they knew where we were, where gentlemen. Where were we? Do we have an answer? We have one for Edu. I think we have one for Edu. Edu, and I think it looks like Brent's video may have froze, but we have He's Edu. He's back. He's back. He does. He does have Edu. That's two questions right. there, Holly, or two answers, uh, correct? Uh, which it's a two-point ball game, you Holly. Know, after round one, this is great. Jory is catching up. Absolutely. Maybe that means we're throwing really softball questions. Or maybe but Jory really did study more than he might have let on. Well, Holly, in 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 in, in my in my pregame discussion with with Jory, I'll say there was a little bit of there was a, well, there was a whole lot of confidence, a little bit of trash talking. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you know he 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 talked about a handicap for his competitor, and I'm wondering if maybe that was strategy in the beginning to really build up uh, Brent's uh, confidence and and maybe to get him to a place where he was vulnerable, mm -hmm. and now he's striking. That's a really great strategy, Michael. I think so. Build them up just to tear them down. It could be the dark side uh, really coming out. We're, we're going to see what happens and then in round two. And I do want to tell our competitors and our listeners that our competitors do have children. We are in isolation. Things can be difficult trying to Skype in to a, a trivia contest. So if any, we've told them if any, you know, anything comes up, they can run away and we'll, you know, we'll get things right mm -hmm. and, and then edit it and post as, as the professionals say, Holly. Yes, and there are no stand-ins or doubles here. So. <coughs> no stand-ins or doubles. We will not accept answers from a child or a pet. No. I think that is what we agreed Definitely upon. Definitely neither of those are acceptable. Now, for those of you, you know, that are familiar with round two or didn't hear the beginning of the rules uh, for the trivia trials. I'm going to run and grab a bottle if you're running. <laughs> also, drinks are very important to this game. Drinks are very important, Holly. Sometimes you got to take a break. And we know now Brent does not have the force. He does not have the force. Too had bad. he had the force, he maybe was able to grab a beverage. I think, you know, yeah. I said before in a previous episode... Yeah. If I were going to have a droid, especially if I were going to be quarantined with a droid, yeah. I think it would have to be Chopper or BD-8. Yeah, no, I BB think... BB-8? BD-8. I mean, maybe you've already had one too many beverages, and I need to send have the I droid seen the movies? back to the kitchen. I just think that both of those droids would be good to double as a bottle opener. I couldn't agree more with you, Holly. Um, it looks like our competitors have their beverages in hand, and, and folks will once again run through the, the rules of round two since... Uh, Brent has the current lead right now. We're going to ask Brent to list off six numbers, Holly, between 1 through 12. And those numbers that he selected uh, or selects will be associated with the question, which will be his. The remaining questions, then, will be Jory's to answer. Mm -hmm. So... Brent, this is a time where we really encourage our competitors to, to meditate, uh, you know, and, 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 and tap into the force and find those correct numbers that they think they're going to be answer or they're going to be able to answer correctly. So uh, do you have you meditated and do you have those numbers ready for us? Let's see. One, three, six, nine, eight, eleven. One, three, six, nine. Eight and eleven. Eight. All right. And eleven. So, folks, what we will do is we will first ask 
Brent these six questions that he has chosen. These are his numbers. The four spoke to him, Holly, and these num- numbers were chosen for him. They were. And Brent, may I remind you, if you get any of these wrong, you have done it to yourself. You have done it to yourself. And another refresher right. for... Another <laughs> another refresher for the rules, folks. If Brent gets an answer incorrect, there is an opportunity for his competitor to steal Holly. So yep. if he attempts to answer a question and is wrong, we'll give Jory the opportunity to steal the answer. Um, you also are awarded an opportunity for multiple choice in this round, Holly. Uh, answering, though, a question outright, you are rewarded for that, and you'll receive two points for a correct answer. If you go to multiple yep. choice, your point value will then go down to one, and your opponent will then have the opportunity to mm-hmm. use those multiple choice options. And you know, Michael, that multiple choice is so, again, generous. It's generous, um, and I believe those instructions are probably clear as mud, so we're going to yep. see how it plays out here. Don't say we never did anything for you. Brent, for your round two First question, it is question number one. And don't forget, if you don't have an answer, you need the uh, the multiple choice options. Just ask for those, and we are willing to read those for you. And your question is this. Where on the Death Star does Galen claim to have laid his trap? That could be a tough question. That That's a tough question. I'll, I'll, I'll be yeah. honest. The entrance is the exhaust port right above the main port, but that's not the correct answer. I guess in the uh, what do you call it in the thermal exhaust. Thermal exhaust is that your final answer, or would you? Prefer yeah, that'll be my final answer. Final answer. That is incorrect. Uh, Jory, you have an opportunity to steal. Would you like to steal? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, um, so sure. A lot of meditation, maybe tapping into the force on this one, Holly. We're gonna have to see. It comes from within. Crazy. It's in the arc in the arc reactor. Is that your final answer? Yes. Holly, that is incorrect as well. The correct answer was the reactor module. He lays uh, that uh, very specifically in his hologram. Uh, uh, Holly, that's a difficult question. That is a difficult question, but they picked it. They p- <laughs> Brent picked it. You were absolutely right. The force was not with him on that one. It certainly wasn't. Maybe number three will be with him. And Brent, your question is this. Don't forget you have the opportunity for multiple choice, which will reduce to a one point value. You know, one is better than none. Amen. Holly, Question number three, what is it? What alias does Jin use when imprisoned by the Imperials in Rogue One? Leanna Halick. Well, that Final took... Answer. That's a two-point correct answer, Holly, for Brent. Putting him up nine to five, I believe. If my math is good, going to go ahead and say it isn't. Holly, can you confirm the score? That is correct. Nine to, nine five. to five. You know, Michael... Yeah. Brent didn't even give me the chance to hit the timer the, button did, on my stopwatch. Absolutely. I'll just tell you, don't even worry about the timer button because I think we're nailing it right now. That's right. Phrasing. Uh, phrasing. phrasing. And <laughs> that is the one thing that stuck with me from the movie, so I'm totally screwed from here on out. <laughs> I, Holly, he's using the two-point advantage there, you know, and, and let's hope, you know, he can answer him outright. I mean, Going if he forward. is totally screwed from here on out, he still has four more questions in this round. He still has four questions, but if, you know, if Jory can get a s- couple steals, two pointers, he's right back in the ball game. That's true. All right, Brent, your third question is question number six, and it is this. How many death troopers accompany Director Krennic on the Urso farm? Holly, some people may think this is a softball, but... It could be. It could be a softball, but it, you really need to be paying attention to that opening six. scene. Is I'm that your six. final answer? 
That is my final answer. Holly, it's a final answer, and it's a correct one. It is. That puts him at 11 points. You know, Michael, Yeah. did you mean to make question number six also have the answer number six, or was that by chance? Um, I, That was the force, if, if I've ever seen it, Everything Holly. lined up here. Um, I thought you were accusing me of having the incorrect answer highlighted, and I almost said, how dare you? <laughs> uh so we go now to Brent's fourth question, Holly. It's number eight. What is it? Who said it? You may fire when ready. Well, Holly, I, I, the fans are going to be upset. That, I, in my opinion, is a softball. Also, I never claim to have the right accent. You never claim to have the right accent. I mean, no, I can do an accent repeat if they would prefer. We may after this round. I might have to have you do the accent because I'm not sure if it's said by two different people. If not, it's just Tarkin. I can I can repeat the question with an accent, but Brent, I can't guarantee that that accent is from the correct character. <laughs> you may get a Yoda, you know, who wasn't even in the movie. Michael, that would be misleading. That would be very misleading. It would be but, the, <laughs> but these are the trials. You never know what you're going to get. Does he need the multiple choice? Brent, would you like the I'll multiple choice or Tarkin. would you... No, it'll just confuse me. He's answering Tarkin <laughs> Holly, and that is another correct two-point mm -hmm. answer. Uh, starting to pull away. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Jory is going to have to knock his questions out of the park. Mm -hmm. And, folks, this is the force at play. This is Jory tapping in to that, that, that spirit, that force, and just picking numbers, and he had the correct answers. Uh, it was Brent, Michael, but... Wait, did I say Jory? That was really I had nice. I confused. But Brent, yeah, really tapping. And I, I mean, <laughs> Jory as well, um, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Thanks for correcting me on You're that welcome. one. I zoned out for a second. He Must be out. the Jose Cuervo. Or it could be a Sith plot. It could be a Sith plot. And then we go to your fifth question, Brent. And that is question number nine. And that question is this... At what trading outpost does Cassian first hear news of the defector Imperial pilot and the planet killing weapon? Ooh, Holly, that's a that's this a, is a tough one. That's a tough one. Was also presented on the screen at the, at the, in the film. You have to know how to read to be able to get this that one right. That would be helpful. I, I think I, I'll take multiple choice. He's Ooh. going with the multiple choice, Holly. Do the we have one. those answers? Do you want to hear them? Absolutely. Is it because you don't know how to pronounce some of them? Well, I don't. So if you could pronounce them, that would be great. Well, I'll try. Is it A, Jeddah City? B, Ring of Kafreen? C, Ring of Sardine? Or D, Nima Outpost? Oh, yeah. I, I'm really not. Ring of second, the first ring, but the second choice. Not the sardine, but the other ring. Kafreen. Holly, yes, that one. It, Ring of Caprine. I'm not sure if Brent just doesn't like sardines or if he watched Rogue One, a Star Wars story. That is a correct answer. That is right. For one point, Holly, that, you know, that's the first multiple choice that Brent's used. Um, he wasn't able to pull that one out. That's a sweaty question, though. I will say that. Very sweaty. And if you don't mm -hmm. memorize that little specific detail, yeah. it's going to bite you. You know, Michael, honestly, I probably would have gone with Ring of Sardine. Uh, yeah. You know, is that That's one fair. of the rings in The Lord of the Rings? Uh, yes, I believe it was. I thought so. Also a different franchise. Um, you want to probably ask um, uh, uh, Professor Dumbledore. Um, I'm not really sure if that, you know, is in a part of that universe or not. Uh, but we go to Brent's final question. It's question number 11. And the question is this, Brent. Chirrut and Baze are members of an order which asks, asks? Oh, which acts. That's which the writer's acts? problem. Let me start it over for uh, you. Yep, absolutely. Chirrut and Baze are members of an order which acts as a protector of the Kyber Temple. What is the name of the order? Mm. That's a that's guardian a, of the wills. Holly, that's another two that is points. Correct. The man very clearly studied Holly. I, I, I'm pretty sure in his in his pregame conversation, mm -hmm. he probably was trying to throw us off a little bit with his preparedness. Yeah, I feel deceived 
by what I heard his preparedness was. Well, Holly, that is the dark side if I've ever seen it. It seems like he's fully embraced that dark side. I feel like it's true. Uh, it's just a matter of time before we see he the hood. He did lob a couple of tennis balls at me. That, that, th that is the force speaking to mm -hmm. you. And tennis balls, I do not believe they exist in the Star Wars universe. There are some things in the Star run, Wars Jory, universe, too. Yeah, I got to go. <laughs> Jory has to run, folks. So Brent has scared him away. Brent has scared him away. Holly, we're, we're going to come back here in a moment. We're going to allow our competitor here to take a, mm -hmm. a little break and, and get his you – know, hopefully he's not going and studying right now. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to go mm -hmm. ahead and, and take a, a quick beverage break and allow our competitors to get uh, reacquainted, and, and we'll be right back. Uh, folks, we're back, ready to get back to round two. Our, 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 our competitors are – are hydrated, you know, with their beverage of choice. All the kids are back to sleep, Holly. I can only imagine it's pretty difficult having children, being in isolation, mm -hmm. and having, you know, a really small, silly podcast hitch up about competing, uh, competing in the trivia trials. I also think the same for competing in trivia competing, trials, Michael. Competing, competing. I, I never claim to be, you know, strong in the English language, Holly. You're just strong with the force. Strong with the force. Yeah, you heard your mad look. And Mad Libs <laughs> are, are not my strong suit either, and, and everyone knows that here on Flying Casual. Mm -hmm. Jory, you are now in round two. There are six questions coming your way. You didn't pick these questions. The force was working against you in the beginning, was on the side of, of mm -hmm. Brent there, but now we're going to see, Holly, if these questions work in his favor with a few two-pointers, he's right back mm -hmm. in this game. You know, I would like to give an update. Jory, no pressure. No pressure. But What's that score, Holly? You have five points. Five points coming into this round against Brent. Sixteen out of round mm -hmm. two. He's going to work hard to get this. I know he will. He's confident, and we're going to see how this unfolds. Jory, number two was chosen for you, and that question is this: It's a doozy, Holly. Here we go. How many credits? are the Empire awarding for information on the missing cargo pilot? Holly, now this was a very sweaty detail. It was. I believe it was even said through a hologram at one point on I think Jetta I, City. Yeah. I'm going to need uh, multiple choice in this one. Holly, he's going with a multiple mm -hmm. choice, and the multiple choice answers are this. A, 1,000 credits. B, 600 credits. C, 500 credits, or D, 100 credits? Holly, that, those answers are really close in value. They are. The and writer's not so generous on this one. You know, I think I missed this answer all seven times I watched this movie. I, you are correct. <laughs> you are correct. You did indeed. Uh, Jory, do you have an answer for us? 1,000 credits. He chose 1,000 credits, Holly, and that answer is unfortunately incorrect. That is a no points awarded to Jory on that. The correct answer is not being given. I have to <laughs> ask. I Luckily, my colleague here informed me of my own rules. Uh, <laughs> uh, back in character here, uh, Brent, would you like to steal on this one? And do you need the answers repeated? Sure. Yes, please. Your options are A, 1,000 credits, B, 600 credits, C, 500 credits, or D, 100 credits. Holly, I, I almost feel bad for asking the question. I'm going to go with 100 credits because the Empire just seems like they're a bunch of cheaps. They are a bunch of cheapskates, but in this instance, Holly, they were actually offering 600 credits for information on Bodhi Rook. 600 big ones. Lots of credits, lots of big ones, as my colleague stated. Unfortunately, no points are awarded here. We're now going to go to question number four, another question that was chosen for Jory, our competitor here. Holly, this just shows you that you really want to win that first round to be able to choose your own numbers, even if you don't know what the questions are. Unless the force is choosing them for you, Michael. It could be. We're not sure. The force is everywhere. It binds us. Mm -hmm. It even penetrates us, Holly. Sometimes it does. Amen. Phrasing. Oh, phrasing <laughs> from the host here. Holly, question number four is for Jory, and what is that question? Well, Jory, what is 
Cassie and Andor's rank in the Rebel Alliance? There's a lot of ranks, Holly. There in are. The Rebel Alliance. Captain. Final answer. He comes out with Captain That's Holly. Right. Is that correct? That is correct. That is two points two for points. Jory coming out swinging. I think, Holly, he oh. might have been messing with us there in that first incorrect answer. I feel like mm-hmm. he's going to come out swinging now. I think that they both had to get their first question wrong I think to Brooke, get the rest know, right. Jory, your next question is question number five, and that question is this. What is the name of Saul Guerrero's tentacled interrogator on Jeddah City? Borgalit. Wow, Holly, not even enough time for me to crack a joke about this character. That is correct that for is. two points. Doesn't even need to go to multiple choice. Holly, I'm astounded. I thought the name of the character was War Gullet for a long time. <laughs> I actually thought it was Bad Mullet. Uh, that was actually one of our, uh, no, actually Don Mullet. Uh, or Don Mallet and Bad Mullet were two of our multiple choice options in case you were curious. War Bullet. It could have been War Bullet. That's, I mean, Saul Guerrero, a little hard to understand mm-hmm. as that character. It's true. Um, Bullet. So, Bullet. Um, that was actually that really was, spot we on. Might actually seek these gentlemen for some impersonations for the podcast yeah. in future episodes. So be ready for that. Um, Holly, we now go to question number seven, which is Jory's four. Fourth question of round two. Yes. Admiral Raddus devises a plan to use a disabled Star Destroyer to destroy the shield gate. What ship does he summon to execute this plan? Ooh, Holly, that's... I mean, I'm I, I'm not one to know vehicles and ships. Mm. I'll tell you right now, that's not that's nothing. I well, multiple choice. He's going with the multiple <clears throat> choice. I would too. Your options are: A, Hammerhead Corvette; B, a Ewing; C, Nebulon B Frigate. Did I say that right? Yeah, Frigate, Frigate. Yeah. Sure. Colgate, whatever. D, Cadillac Starfighter. Well, I actually did not see Cadillacs are in the universe. Was it a pink Cadillac? Could oh. be a pink. Was Cadillac. it on 22s? Could Ooh. be. Uh, C is Nebulon B frigate. And unfortunately that is incorrect. Uh, Brent, I got to come to you. Would you like to steal for one point? For one point, it's the hammerhead Corvette. He doesn't need the options repeated, mm-hmm. Holly. He comes out and remembers Hammerhead Corvette. Not to be confused, Holly, with the Cadillac Starfighter. And I didn't know that there were Corvettes, but no Cadillacs. But, uh, there may be. That may be a Legends reference to Cadillacs in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But Brent gains yet another point. Things are starting to look pretty difficult here for Jory. Uh, mathematically, Holly, not even sure if he's still in the game, but unfortunately, here in the trivia trials, math is in our strong suit. So we play the match to finish, and then we add everything up in the end. That's right. Thank God for calculators. Thank God for calculators. We may have <laughs> to take a break to do the math. Jory, your fifth question of round two is this... On Scarif, two stormtroopers mention that a certain airspeeder has been deemed obsolete. What type of airspeeder do they reference? Jeezy Pete's Holly. I, it's as if Brent picked the easier questions with the force. I, I don't understand how he did it. Things just fell into Brent's lap. Maybe he really didn't watch the movie, but it's, the Force is strong with him. Um, it may, maybe Jory watched Attack of the Clones. I'm not sure. This is a difficult question. He's in he's in deep meditation right now. Does he go with the multiple choice or not? Will he come out of this Force trance? We'll see. Maybe. I don't know. T fifteen. Uh, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just give me the multiple choice. That's fine. Are you sure that you want to go with the multiple choice? Sure, why not? No, no, just T-15. Holly, 
I almost responded when he first answered <laughs> because he pulled it out of the box somewhere. T15 is correct. Wow. That <laughs> is uh, impressive. That is two points awarded to Jory. He's finally in double digits, Holly. The Force actually spoke to him in the last minutes there the and force, kept him going. Absolutely. The Force spoke to him in no way, shape, or form were the hosts here mm -hmm. affecting that decision or that answer <laughs> at all. Uh, he comes right. out down 17 to 11. Holly, the ball game is not over. It is not. Mathematically, I'm looking at the score right now. You know, I couldn't tell you the odds, but he is still eligible to win this game. I think that there is hope for Jory. There is hope for Jory. We're going to find out how much hope there Rebellions is Rebellions are built on hope. Rebellions are built on and hope. And so is Trivia Trials. Let's hope that that isn't a question in this match. Um, <laughs> Jory, we are going to number 12, which is your last question in round two. And that question is this. When Jen is taken to Saw's hideout, one of Saw's partisans is being entertained by a hologram of what? It wasn't Britney Spears, it, was it, Michael? I, I'm not sure of the actor and who was doing this in this scene, but Holly, it very well could have been. I think we'll have to watch the credits this time. We absolutely will watch the credits. I'm just going to throw it out He's because with the gut. I don't remember the species, but... Was it a Twilic Dancer? Holly, he answers Twilic Dancer, and that is absolutely correct for two points. The oh, boy is yeah. pulling it out. Uh, is he messing with us <laughs> here on Flying Casual? I'm not sure. We're going to find out here in round three. Holly, after round two, <laughs> our score is 17 to 13. A close ball game. It's anyone's ball game at this point. I have to be honest. We're going into round three, folks. And round three, if you remember, revolves around movie quotes. We call this our path of destiny round. Each competitor will be given three questions um, with varying difficulty. So your first question will be worth one point. Your second question will be worth two points. Your third question will be worth three points. And they all revolve around movie quotes. We may ask you to finish the quote. We may ask you who said the quote. You never know. The kicker here is our leader from round two, our now leader, uh, Brent, will get to choose whether he is actually picking the light side of the force of the force for his destiny or the dark side each side consists of three questions he'll be given the opportunity to, ch to pick which path he is actually going to be taking and jory have you thought about it are you going the light side or, or are you going the dark side brent or jory michael oh i asked brent that's my bad mm -hmm. once again confusing our competitors there's a lot on my mind right now holly now michael does know our patreons and he knows them personally i know and love each and every Patreon, but switching cameras and asking questions is very difficult here on Flying Casual. Uh, never, never, you know, never pronounced that I was a technical genius or a broadcast expert. Um, but uh, here we are, <laughs> Brent. You, go, you, you, my friend, are you going the light side or the dark side? We're gonna give him a few seconds, Holly, here to think about this one. What I, will he pick, Holly? I, I really think he's gonna go dark, but I'm not sure. Each side is pretty well balanced. Um, looks like he may be seeking counsel with his child. Probably a good call. They're having a sidebar. Having a little sidebar here on the trials. The, the Padawans say dark side. The Padawans are saying dark side. Holly, those are three questions surrounded by movie mm -hmm. quotes. And we're going to go ahead and ask those questions. Um, and uh, folks, uh, 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 a bonus of the dark side is that Michael asks each question in a English accent, Holly. That's why I'm not asking. If them. that's a surprise for everyone, as I'm sure it is, I don't think I can pull it off, but we might try here. Well, you know, I guess it makes sense that Brent would have chosen the dark side because yeah. he also asked for the accents earlier. He did ask for the accents. And um, if there's one thing you know about flying casual. Yeah 
Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. Though an English accent may not come out, it could be Australian, Holly. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm unable to tell the difference. It could be a hybrid. It could be a New England accent. It could. Uh, Brent, you chose the dark side. And don't forget, they these questions revolve around movie quotes. And your first question is worth one point. And your question is this. Brent... Finish the quote. Be careful not to choke blank. Now, Michael. Yeah, Holly. On your aspirations, director. Wow, Holly. He nailed the quote. On your aspirations. That's one point awarded to Brent. Um, Yeah. I think it might have been the lack of the British accent that gave it away. The lack of the British accent. I will say I did not do a Darth Vader accent. So that's true. That is good commentating if I've ever seen it. (laughs) (laughs) Holly, that puts (laughs) Brent at 18 points now. You can fix it in (laughs) post-production. Fixing it in post-production. We will add an accent to my voice, um, but we will give it a try here with your two-point question. Uh, And... Your two-point question, Brent, is a who said it question. Your two-point question is this. I expect you not to rest until you can assure the Emperor that Galen Erso has not com- com- compromised this weapon in any way. <laughs> Holly, that was felt brilliant. Australian. It felt like the dark side went down under. If I've ever heard an Australian accent, that was mm-hmm. it. I Do you think it was you? Director Krennic when he was on vacation at uh, the Caribbean? And the Caribbean. The pirate things. Is that your final answer? I'm re- I'll go with Krennic because I'm not sure. He asks, he answers Krennic, and unfortunately, Holly, that is a miss. The correct answer was Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. No steals here in round three, Holly. But uh, impressive, you know, so far. I mean, not a whole lot of, you know, misses for Brent. I feel like my colleague here is losing character, um, but maybe not. I just think that that was the most perfect Darth Vader accent that I have ever heard. Well, Holly, you're about to receive more accents here with Brent's three-point question. And it's another finish the quote for Brent. For three points, Brent, this is your last question. Finish the quote. You have made time an ally of the rebellion. I suggest we solve both problems simultaneously with an immediate test of the weapon. Failure will find you explaining why to... blank. Now, I will tell our competitor, if he needs that question or that quote repeated in a non-accented response, I am willing to do so. It might throw him off with this accent. It is possible. Is it the emperor? Final answer? His final answer is the emperor, and it is incorrect, Holly. The The quote, the finished quote, is a far less patient audience not you know one of my favorite moments in rogue one a very difficult quote the lengthiness of the quote Mm -hmm. maybe even the accent threw him off a little bit it could have been a combination of all of it it could it could have been a combination of all of it but folks i remind you these are the trials it's always difficult to handle when it's that long Phrasing is definitely in mm-hmm. order on that Phrasing. one. <laughs> and that was one yes. of probably the best phrasings that have ever been phrased on Flying Casual. And after three rounds of trivia trials, Holly, Brent ends with 18 points. He sure does. Now, I'm not sure if it's mathematically possible for Brent to even win. Is it or tie? You know, if Jory gets every single one of these right, I think that he could win. He could actually win. Let's hope, Holly, that there is no 
uh, tie at the end of this game because I'm not sure we have the questions to actually do a sudden death round. We'll have to pull those out of our hats, but maybe we can. Now, we go to the light side, and I kind of say, Holly, Jory has dabbled in the light side for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably, you know, less than the dark side, if I'm being honest. But he's stuck with the light side. He gets three questions revolving around movie quotes in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And he can actually pull out a win here. I think we'll have to see if the Force is strong with this one. The Force, I can feel it. It's very strong. Phrasing. Holly, let's go ahead and give... Jory, his first one-point question from round three. What is it? Jory, your one-point question in round three is a finish the quote. Here is your quote. The strongest stars blank. I, I, the writers, you know, maybe chucking a softball in the moment here, knowing where Jory would be in this moment. Is he going to get it right? Holly, I also want to ask, would it help? Can you rephrase? If we could repeat. Sorry, repeat. We could repeat the question. We absolutely can do that. Not sure if Holly has any accents to assist on this (sighs) one. Holly, would you like to repeat question one for one point? Probably Sans accent. Okay. Finish the quote. The strongest stars blank. This is a good one, Michael. This is a good one, Holly. Uh, not sure how much assistance we can throw Jory on this one. Um, uh, I will say a predominant character in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Or a prominent. Not sure what predominant means. Could be prominent or predominant. Yeah. Jory. Honestly, I have answer. no clue on this one. Um, the strongest stars... Blank. Shine brightest. Holly answers shine brightest, and unfortunately, <laughs> that is not the correct answer. Holly, what is Burn the correct the answer? That is correct. Have the strongest stars Kyber. have hearts of Kyber. That is a one point miss, Holly, for Jory. We're now going to go to his two point question. And remember, folks, the difficulty of these questions increases as we go mm-hmm. in the round three. You know, I think if Jory gets both of these right, we will have a tie. We will have a tie. Goodness gracious, the <laughs> force help us. We're not ready. So, mm-hmm. Jory, your second question for two points is another who said it question, Holly. What is that question? Who said it? There is more than one sort of prison, Captain. Holly, that... I mean, that the questions just get sweatier and sweatier as we go. They do. That's why this is two instead of one. Wow, phrasing. It's deep. Uh, phrasing again. <laughs> yeah, I have no words. Uh, repeat. He'd like the question repeated. Holly, can you repeat it for him? I can Sans do that. accent. There is more than one sort of prison, Captain. Holly, this scene feels like they may be in a prison. It feels like they could be in more than one prison. I, so the quote says. So the um, quote says. Yes, this is a tricky one. Ah, uh, man. Holly. He, I hear it. Well, would you look at that? He pulls another one out of the hat, Holly. That question is answered correctly with it cheer is. it and I, I, I I'm blown away Holly where did that come I'm from I'm blown away he now needs to hit his three point question to tie Holly if we have to go to mm-hmm. sudden death I'm gonna have to say it's probably gonna have to be recorded at another time actually <laughs> I think we have questions to ask and we'll see how it goes but this is a very difficult question Holly for three points it is. and the tie so, Jory, think about your options here. You can either get it wrong and lose yeah. or get it right <laughs> and stress Michael out. I, Holly, I you couldn't have said it any better, you know, mm-hmm. than I could have. It's Get it it's, right, Jory. Get it right. It's a difficult <laughs> question, Holly. I would think, you know, he, he would probably want an accent on this one, but 
you know, I, I just don't know if we have it in the bag. I don't think I have the accent in the bag. Okay. But. Okay. Jory, finish the quote. Move east and get wide of the ship. Find a position between here and the tower. Once you get to the best spot, light the place up. Make blank. Oh, Holly, another finish the quote. The writer's hitting us hard mm-hmm. with finish the quotes with the yes. three pointers. That's why they're worth three points. They are. They're difficult. Make questions. 10 soldiers feel like 100. Will? Holly, it's unfortunately in the trivia trials, you, leniency is one thing that the council cannot really grant when quoting a film directly. He says 10 soldiers feel like 100. 12. The correct quote is 10 men feel like 100. Uh. Holly, our winner is none other than Brent. I am blown away. He had the quote. He He had had the quote there. He pulled it out of his sock and he just said soldiers instead of men. That is one thing. The trivia trials and the council does not allow is variations of the quote. You probably saw that in prior trivia trials episodes. Down to the wire, people getting quotes barely wrong, Holly, and it ends up costing them the game. You know, unfortunately, Jory, I don't make the rules. Michael makes the rules. Uh, The council makes the rules, Holly, but I gotta say that we could not have had two better competitors here. You know, Jory really seemed down on his luck after the first round, down by nearly double digit points, comes back in rounds two and three for the last question, and he's within three points there to tie the game. That was a phenomenal comeback. That was a phenomenal comeback. That was, comeback. Michael, I would say, the comeback of the trivia trial. The comeback of the trivia trial so far, and mm-hmm. I'll say, I don't know if that one can be topped here in the Intergalactic League. That was a hell of a match from two heavyweights in the Flying Casual family. Uh, so we do want to congratulate Brent, knocking it out of the park there. Had a strong lead. You know, a lot of the time it came down to the wire, and, and Jory just couldn't pull it out. You know, Michael, I get Crazy. it. Phrasing for sure. Well, he's got kids. Phrasing <laughs> for sure. That is exactly why Jory has kids. And he's drinking that Patron on camera. And Holly, I, I couldn't be more pleased with the first installment of the Trivia Trials Intergalactic League. A couple of great competitors. I don't think this isn't the last that we're going to see of Jory. I don't think this is the last we'll see of Jory. I think that Jory is going to come back bigger stronger phrasing and harder i could not have than said before it. i could not have said it better myself holly bigger stronger harder bolder maybe a little darker Oof. i think we saw the light side of jory maybe that could have played into the loss i'm not sure yeah. um but folks i really hope you enjoyed that this first installment of the trivia trials intergalactic league this will not be the last of the trivia trials that you will see it's just the beginning you're surely going to see jory coming again tr- coming back again uh trying to you know claim a win here um but it's still early holly it's still early um now the boys can see how sweaty it just really can get on the trivia you trials know, and if you're listening to jory right now you know sometimes you just gotta have that little drink afterwards absolutely you lose your drink a clink of the glass and the and the ice and then we've got brenton here really you know taking a commanding lead from the beginning and holding out there at the end we're surely going to see him back um on to the next trivia trials i'm sure once we get through a few exhibition matches this will not be the last that we see of either of these competitors and folks i really hope you enjoyed this content um if you did you're on youtube go ahead throw a like subscribe to the podcast there are more trivia trials to come and these 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 friends of ours surely did did not disappoint holly they didn't and i am glad that we got to have this absolutely brent and jory you have both officially faced your trials unfortunately it just didn't work out for jory in this round and brent is our winner holly any final words here in uh, parting ways I think this is a good time to do an experiment to see if losing trivia trials really does drive a man to the dark side. Could drive a man to the dark side, yet to be determined. The brink of destruction. Both of our competitors, their futures are are quite unwritten right now. We're not really sure where they're going or what strategies we'll see in the future, but um, hopefully we will learn more about their strategies in and, and coming matches, and we have other competitors that we will be seeing here soon. So uh, stay tuned, folks, and uh, may the force be with you.